So here we go, third time round doing this challenge, Canal River Lake. Already failed it twice, but I thought that's okay. Never have to do that again. No, I was wrong. Here we go, round three. So this time round, despite the challenge never being passed before, the stakes are being upped yet again. Mark and I have to catch carp each from a canal, a river, and a lake. However, both of our biggest carp have to be bigger than the biggest carp we caught previously on this challenge. So on both previous attempts of this challenge, it's been the river that has tripped me up on both occasions. The first time I lost a fish really early on, on that river session and everything went downhill from there. Second time round, a bream beat the carp to the hook bait and that was it, challenge failed. But now I've got a third chance to redeem myself. On the previous challenges, we have come so close, literally within one fish. So making the right venue choices is gonna be absolutely imperative to us passing the challenge this time around. So for my third attempt of this challenge, Harry and I are going to what is arguably the most carpy country on the planet, Belgium. We are both absolutely pumped for this. If we can't pass this challenge here, we can't pass it anywhere. I'm Mark Pitchers, wager wearing, tea drinking, caffeine intolerant, beard trimming, carp freak. I've been an angler for over 30 years and caught carp from waters far and wide, big and small. For me, it doesn't matter where, as long as the challenge is exciting and inspiring. But in this series, the target is out of my control. Three challenges will be put forward on Fox's Facebook page. Then it's up to you to have the final say on what mission I take on. I've faced some incredibly tough challenges so far. Have you been drinking de icer again? Some of which I've smashed out the park. This one for the win. Others have dealt me a devastating blow. I literally have no words. But I'm still here and ready to pick up any gauntlet that is thrown down. This carp freak is not giving up without a fight. Yes! This is the challenge. When we first got to the river, my first impressions were it was pretty featureless. Um, yeah, there wasn't a lot to go on, but at the same time, I did feel like that could be an advantage because I thought any sort of features of note would be likely fish holding areas. It doesn't, doesn't feel Belgian enough for me, I'm not gonna lie. I don't know what I was expecting. I was expecting Tintin bouncing through the grass. I was expecting Krista Clerk topless. <laughs> <laughs> being, being massaged <laughs> by Gio. By Gio. <laughs> <Van Oren. laughs> it's all a bit of nothing, isn't it? It's, it's very, Let's, um, one word, describe it. Go. Ah. Mm. That's, yeah. It's not really a word, but it's more a feeling. We need there to... must be places where it's less meh. Well, let's find those places. This is gonna be good. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not doubting it. I like your hat. <laughs> so the plan from there was to drive up and down that stretch of river also look on Google Maps, on satellite view, for any carpy looking areas that could potentially hold fish. So although most of the river was relatively featureless, we did find some nice, nice bays that came off the main bit of the river. There was also a few areas where there was overgrown trees, but there was one area on Google Maps which just seemed to have a big collection of, of overhanging trees, and that's where we headed to. Look, you'd have a... You'll have a rod there, rod on the end there. That is literally a cliff face. You could just dive in if you hooked one. Just belly <laughs> flop. I mean, I think you'd be, I think it'd be all right to stand up, but you'd just never get out. Looks good here as well, doesn't it? This... It does. It's just, <laughs> it's like so much good water and it's impossible to fish. Have you seen a bream roll? Have you? Mm. Okay. Oh, it does look good. Where can we go? Where can we go? 
There must be, there must be somewhere, there must be a place you can just get in, there must be something. Hello, you can literally do it here. You could literally, look, look, I'm down. Like right by the vans, the only place we didn't look, we literally came out the vans and headed that way. <laughs> it's still a little bit dodged, but we'll, oh. that's nothing, there is it, go. that? I just... Happy days. That works. It's gonna be tight, mind. Getting up's gonna be a lot easier than getting down as well. Yeah. That's good, I'm happy with yeah, that. that works. And we don't have to move the vans. <laughs> cool. Oh, and I've just seen a bream. Oh, that's nice. Nice. Right, let's cool. go. Do it, sorted. Well, for the past three hours, we've been driving around this river, trying to find an area that stands out from the rest, really. We did find a few nice looking areas, uh, but there were anglers already there, or they look like spots that had already been heavily fished. The banks were well down, and I, I felt like we wanted to get away from those, those spots that are frequently fished and go and try and find somewhere else. And um, there was one area that really sort of stood out on the uh, Google Maps, on the, the satellite view. And here we are now, we've got around probably about 200 yards of snags over on the far bank. It looks a fantastic looking area. The problem is, it's really, really difficult to fish. The banks are very, very high, very steep. There's just one, there's just one spot along this 200 yard of snags where there's a little bit of a step down to the water and that's where me and Harry are gonna double up tonight. It, it's gonna be tight, it's gonna be a bit of a squeeze and I'm feeling it. I think this looks a great area. It looks like a spot that isn't fished. There's no worn down banks, there's no, no trodden paths, anything like that. It looks like a spot that gets very, very much neglected, and I'm sure there's going to be carp there. Well, having seen a few bream rolling in the swim and seeing matchmen weighing in keep nets of bream, my opening plan was to go with big hook baits to hopefully deter the attentions of the bream. Both rods were positioned as close to the snags as I could whilst also remaining in that shallow water. I didn't want to be in the, the deeper water which dropped off to about 13 feet. Get as close to that far bank and as close to the snags as I could. Nice heavy tackle, 23 pound X to set. Size two wide gape X's tied to 35 pound naturals cortex hook link. Really substantial tackle that would get the fish safely away from the snags if I was lucky enough to hook one, of course. So going into that first night, I was absolutely exhausted, but I was really confident. Um, it, there just had to be carp in this area. It just screamed carp. There's so many snags and features amongst what was otherwise a relatively featureless stretch of river. They had to be there. As the evening quickly drew in, we finished getting the rigs in position and scattered 30 to 40 pro stim liver boilies over each rod via the catapult. I've got to be honest, I was expecting a bite through the night, but as the sun came up, we both woke up to motionless rods. It was looking like the river was going to be the venue that caused us problems once again. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. Right, off the mark. That's good because I was I'd woken up and I wasn't feeling great. Yes! Fist bump me! If I don't fall off the nicely done. Side of the bank. Did you see me prop of like slip down the bank, which was guaranteed gonna happen anyway? I did not. Oh, it was, it was great, I'm Have sure. I think we got it on the GoPro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
we are up and running on this challenge. To be honest, I was getting a bit worried, a little bit despondent. It had been, you know, three hours since first light and that bike period I thought was slipping away. But, drop back on my right hand rod, wound down, fish had reached the middle of the river, rod arced over and this proper wild river common was on the end and uh, yeah, once again I have caught a river carp and the mark is yet to get off the mark and I really want him to, I'm not, I'm like this is a team effort and I really want him to get off the mark so hopefully it's going to be day by to you, who knows. Um, yeah, but we're going to get this one back and I think Mark's already said he's going to have a slight switch around to try and make it happen with hopefully another one of these awesome Belgian river carp. Hey, I caught one and it was such a relief from thinking that nothing was going to happen to catching one in the blink of an eye. I was over the moon and now we just needed Mark to get that river cart monkey off of his back and catch one so we could move on. So Harry's just had one. He's got the challenge up and running, thanks Ollie. But I'm yet to catch a river carp on a river canal lake challenge. But I'm still feeling very confident. When we got here yesterday, we did think this river could be quite breamy. We'd seen a few bream rolling. There was a match going on when we arrived and those matchmen were weighing in a few bream as well. So I went for tactics that would avoid the attentions of the bream. I was using double 18 mil hard hook baits. But as it stands, I don't think the bream are going to be that much of a problem. Um, Harry caught his fish on a, on a standard snowman setup and I think I'm going to switch over to doing the same. Um, so yeah, I'm going to reel in the rods now, but on a conventional snowman setup like I would use back in England and hopefully, hopefully I can get myself a river carp, a river canal lake carp. Days. Let's stay here all, all week. <laughs> if they bring me that bite, I just thought, ah, oh, oh. change to a Yeah, but that man. was exactly how my bite was. Just comes off the shelf. Yeah. And this rod's only been in, what, less than 10 minutes, I think. Hasn't been in long at all. That's slightly bigger. Yeah. Go on! <laughs> oh, yes! Slightly. Slightly. <laughs> Yay! Boom! That's good, isn't it? River! <laughs> river, you've completed the river! Yes! My first ever challenge, river challenge, river canal lake challenge, river cup. Yeah! <laughs> yes! There we go. Boom! Stick, stick to what you know, eh? Look at him. Raggedy. Raggedy. And there you go. That is my first ever river, river canal lake challenge carp. My first Belgian river carp as well. And I'm absolutely made up with that because that means that is the river section of this challenge done. That's it. I think we need to get packed up, head over to the lake, because I do think the lake is gonna be the toughest part of this challenge, actually. So I'm gonna slip this fella back, get packed away, and we're gonna hit the road. It would have been, quite frankly, unthinkable to drive all the way to Belgium and not see our good friend, Chris de Klerk. And luckily for us, he was able to pay us a visit on the river. It had been over five years since I'd seen my carp fishing man crush and as usual, he didn't disappoint. We sat and talked over a brew and a biscuit 
and I couldn't help but admire his long flowing locks blowing in the wind. But sadly, it was soon time for Chris to leave. And as I said our goodbyes with a tear in my eye and a bulge in my pants, we packed the van and got on the road. So from the river, we headed over to Clover Lake, a lake steeped in Belgian carp fishing history, fished by some of the great carp anglers of days gone by and home to some really large carp. I was pumped for this. Well, here we are, we're at the next venue and the next body of water. We're at a lake and we're at Clover Lake to be exact. And this place has lots of history amongst Belgian carp anglers. Yeah, I think it's been quite notorious as a very tricky venue similar to like, the car park lake back in the day yeah. low stock when we spoke to krista clerk this morning and he knew we were coming here he was like Ooh, that's tricky <laughs> but um yeah that's why that's why we're here i think there's a few more fish in here than than back in its sort of glory days mm. a bit like the car park lake now yeah but it's still going to be really really hard so i think without further ado the day is ticking on let's get out on the boat and uh get a flow look in the boat. In the boat. Get afloat. afloat. There we go. And out. So the first thing I wanted to do was get the boat out of the van, get it pumped up and get afloat. Get on the water, have a poke around with a prodding stick, investigate a few likely looking areas and try and build up a better understanding of what lay beneath the surface. <laughs> I mean, I can do that. I can pretend I'm helping. <laughs> then we're both going through it together. That'll make you feel better. With Mark being as helpful as usual, the boat was ready and we set off in search of carp. Paying close attention to the snaggy margins, we both found likely looking areas to place our rods. But we were yet to find any fish or see any signs. That was until Mark was looking for his final spot in the weed. So much weed here. I do feel like the fish will be will be close by. Whoa. Well that's a sign. It's literally on the exact same line where I am now. I'm just looking for sort of holes in the weed. The weed's really quite dense here. I'm just looking for holes in the weed and a fish probably 10, 10 yards from the boat has just shown, it's just crashed out on the exact same line where I am. That is a sign. Okay, I don't want to go right on top of it, but I mean, like where I am now, it looks like there's a bit of a clearing in this weed. Ground's still really soft and, and claggy, but I, I don't think it really matters. The lake in front of us wasn't for the faint hearted. Tree lined margins, loads of submerged snags and lots of weed meant our gear would need to be up to the task. We spooled our reels with 50 pound naturals braid, attached heavy leaders, and went about tying our favorite rigs. I opted for my new favorite bottom bait presentation, the German flipper rig. Tied using a wide gape long shank in a size four, the biggest hook we do in this pattern. I decided to use my ever faithful blowback rig and given the severity of the snags, these were tied using the wide gape beaked X hooks. The X meaning extra strong. I went with two different hook bait choices though. On two rods, I used the same snowman setup that I did on the river. And the third rod was baited with a balanced double tiger nut hook bait. We both used 45 pound Armadillo Snag Leader as our hook link, the perfect choice for this situation. To keep our rigs in place, we attached eight ounce leads to the clips. We jumped in the boat and got to work placing our rigs for our first night on Clover Lake. Well, it might have taken all day, but we're set all up day. <laughs> and the rods are out, finally. And I'm feeling quite confident. Yeah. I. I think you should be <laughs> like that that last rod especially that you put out was mm -hmm. like bang on where two have like proper nutted out. Yeah. We hadn't really seen anything over here all day. No, uh, we hadn't seen anything until you put that last rod out. So, well, until in was, between. When I was out in the boat, I saw a fish show. Yeah. He was just on his own in the weed. Uh, I've seen a few fish showing sort of out there in the main body of the lake, but very little here. And then just saw that last last hour going into dark, 
saw a couple of fish show and went out on the boat to see where, where they'd show and it was just a, a, a wall of weed that just suddenly ended and then well actually when we first arrived I, I'd said to you it looks like there's a bit of coloured water over towards that mm. side over there and I'm pretty sure that that is coming from where that coloured water yeah, was yeah. when we arrived. We saw it in the boat, the yeah. Show. And yeah, I, that rod went out so nice as well. Like a firm silt, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's one of them we've sort of gone from our first five rods that we put out was kind of like, oh, we don't really know yeah. what's going to go on. And then like you've put that one out and it's like, and in between the f other five going out and the last rod going out, things have started to happen in the swim yeah. and, you, and, and you feel more confident. And yeah, yeah I think <laughs> there's quite tench. a few tench uh, <laughs> splashing about, but I think it's looking, been... it's looking more positive yeah. than, than I think what, what, when we <clears> turned <throat> up, knowing that this is a tricky lake and it being bright sunshine and really hot and we boated around and didn't really see a lot a bit of colored water but nothing yeah. concrete but also just being here and not rushing to get the rods out not rushing to find no. spots and just sort of feeling your way in and sort of just sort of i don't know you just the more you're here you just you, you sort of get a feeling for the place yeah, don't you for sure rather than just rushing and trying to get rods out and like i said that last one that's got out i'm like oh it has to go it has to go yeah. But we'll see. We will see. I think now it's going to be get some dinner on the go. Dinner on the go, because um, I don't think we've eaten all day. I don't think we've eaten since yesterday. Since, <laughs> since yesterday lunchtime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So right. um, let's do that. Yeah, let's do that and see what the night brings. No, it's quite a big carp. Okay. <laughs> no, it's not, yeah. Okay, mate, can you, mate, I can't get a net. It's not a big carp. Mm, it's big enough. Oh, pole around you. That's big enough. There you go, that was easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was, that was the most that was terrible, mainly from you. In what sense? In what sense that you had it on for ages. And I was saying, we need to get in the boat, it's a carp. We need to get in the boat, it's a carp. And you said that I had nothing on. I had nothing on. That came in so easy, it didn't pull. To say we're fishing through all that weed, I literally just reeled it straight in. It didn't, it didn't get stuck in the weed once. Yeah, you've got, a, was, I mean, that's a pretty decent fish in there. Yeah, what is it, a 30 maybe? Oh yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's well a 30 pounder, mate, definitely. It's, well, it's... that is a mega start. <laughs> a mega start. <laughs> They're fishing that net. Before we take a look at the fish I've just had, I want to get back out in the boat, get a rod back on that spot. I think there's another chance of a, another early morning bite. Right, let's get a boat. Chris Yates weigh every fish he caught? No. If it, was, if it was Bob James, then this fish will be 24 and a half pounds because I think that's the, that's the weight that every fish they caught was. <laughs> they're pretty, they were, weren't they, in Redmire? That's not even a 30 pounder. It's, it about, it's about 25 pounds. 20, 24 pounds. It'd be another 24 and a half. I'm going to call it 24 pounds in homage to Passion for Anglin where every fish they caught was 24 pounds. <laughs> It's not a 30, it's not even close, it's not. It is. 
It doesn't matter. It's a carp. Stop giving them numbers. Wow, man. <gasps> so obsessed with numbers. How am I? I'm not slagging it off. I'm just saying there's no need to weigh it. Prove me wrong about what? It's weight. Well, I, 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 I don't need to know the weight. Size is irrelevant when they look like this. Okay, okay, it's heavier than I thought, but okay. <laughs> and now he's being lively. What are your fins doing? Do you need a hand? It's that big. No, it's not big at all. I'm just trying to get him all level. Right, are you comfy, Mr. Fish? There we go. Right, that's, it's about, that's it's about 22 pounds. <laughs> Before sporting. It's not that big. Yeah. Are you looking at, is it looking at the <laughs> same fish? Are you looking at the same fish as us? I think that's about 35, 36 It's not, pounds. it's a scraper 30. <laughs> it's, it's, actually fish, quite, it's actually a really nice one. It's a proper old gnarly one. It's a really nice one. A few one. battle scars, as you'd expect in this sort of place. It's a scraper 30. Let me see first. Nah, I want to wait. Know. I want to feel no. the weight. Right, go on then. Twenty-four ten. <laughs> what was he thirty-threes? Thirty-three and a half. There you go. Another twenty-four pounder. Didn't need to weigh it. Thirty-threes. There you go. See. What do you mean? You didn't need to weigh it. I just said it's 33 pounds. <laughs> I just said it's 33 pounds. We didn't need to weigh it. There you go. <laughs> nice fish. Yeah. That's a proper good start, that. That's an amazing start. Look at it. That is a, that is a cool fish as well. There you go. That is the lake part of this challenge up and running. And it may not be a monster by this lake standards, but that's actually my first ever Belgian lake carp and a Belgian PB. So I'm quite chuffed with that. Belgian PB? Isn't my Belgian PB that? 24 and a half pounds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping I get to break this PB at some point during our stay at this lake. But for right now, I'm really chuffed with this one. Absolute magic. There we go. Well, I I was just saying, I didn't, I didn't feel overly confident, but um, the rod I was most confident in, which is over to a tree line, um, really nice sort of clear area next to a log on the bottom of the uh, on the bottom of the lake, and it's just absolutely buckled. I've had to proper put the brakes on because we're right up against the snags and I've managed to turn it, get it away. Mark's just going to bring the boat round now. And uh, yeah, playing a calf and I did not expect it, to, to be honest, um, this early on in the session and with, uh, yeah, not really seeing anything over, over this side and with a lot of action out in front of Mark, but yeah, well, I say happy days, I've hooked it. There's a lot of dramas between now and, and getting it in, let me tell you. Um, yeah, I just need to get out in this boat. Oh, right, coming up to it now. I think, oh, mind you, I haven't seen the lead yet. Why can't I see you yet? I want to see you. Halibut, hug in the bottom. 
There we go. Ah, oh, he's not very big. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Ah. What do you mean, ah? Ah. There we go. Happy days. Yeah. Well, yeah. Did you bring that one with you from the river? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that is technically the lake done already. Technic well, technically, yeah. Technically, yeah. But this is 100% the best place to be. Oh, for, yeah. Yeah. When we've for, seen all them photos of all them 20 kilo plus fish. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm not yeah. in a rush to leave just yet. De definitely not. Not after this start as well. Because it's been a good start. Right. Let's um, we'll get back to the bank. I will. We will. Give him the respect of bringing him back to the bank and not flopping, flopping him over. I know you'd definitely be a flopper. You would definitely flop him back. But <laughs> I'm more respectful than that. So is it respectful to take him out of his watery domain and yeah, totally expose him for all to see? Yeah, he needs exposing. Okay. Then like like that. many people need exposing. <laughs> I've changed my mind. <laughs> I'm going to flop him back. <laughs> Why is that so funny? No, no. Go on, let's have a look, proper look. Don't just flop him back. Let's no, just... no. Oh, we'll we'll give him the dignity of holding him up slightly. There, there you go. go. Yeah. Well done. Look, that's that's a quite a John Wilsony type. Yeah, and I reckon. He's Maybe. actually, he's actually got, he's pretty dense. Is he? He's dense. 15 and a half, not 15. <laughs> yeah. Well done, mate. I'll do. Yeah. I'll do. That's a start. So that was it. The lake was officially ticked off. However, with that new rule of catching fish bigger than what we'd previously caught, we needed one over 41 and I needed one over 42 it was imperative that we stayed here and made the most of the time at this venue. There were big fish out in the lake and it was our best opportunity to catch one. It's weird, you just don't know what they are because it's, it's hard to tell when it's that hit and hold. Everything feels big when you first hook them. But then Mark's one, you know, 33 pounder, decent fish. And it's, he's just wound it in, thought it, well, didn't even think it was on at first until I managed to convince him that we needed to get out in the boat just in case. Here we go, there you go Mark. We got the... That's much bigger. Oh, I oh, say he's much bigger. Look, much bigger. Oh, he's bigger, he's bigger, there we go. And he's in, he's in. Well done. Yes. How big is he? Is he a 30? He's, no, no, he's a, he's a 20. He's a, he's a nice low 20. Lo nice looking fish. And we will take this one back you to sure? the bank. Yes. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> no, I know you wouldn't, but I want a photo. Of a 20 pounder in Belgium? Yeah. yeah okay. If you caught that from the river, you'd be having a photo. Obviously. Well, check that angry one out. Whoa, look how tense he is. Tail's massive. Proper angry male by the looks of things. It's quite quite battle scarred for what seems like quite a young fish, but I guess that's the environment that he's grown up in. My second one of the morning. I, I can't believe that we've had three bites so far this morning. And yeah, I think the lake is our best chance of catching a fish each 
bigger than those ones we had at Hassifen them years ago. So we're going to slip this one back that I reckon is around 23, 24 pounds and hope for one twice the size. Shush, shush, I'm trying to do a bit to camera, shush. Well, just before I had that bite, I was sorting out a rig to get back out on my other rod. So now I need to sort two rigs out, but yeah, I need to get rods back in water quick because it seems to be happening. So we're just coming up to the spot where I caught that last fish from. Definitely does look like there has been feeding because there's, there's a cloud here. Um, but yeah, I'll just have my rod set just here. I um, can't see anything now, but obviously I caught a fish from it, so it is good. So with the acroscope, I've seen a couple of boilies, literally that's it. But yeah, not a lot, so I definitely know, I mean I've caught one off of it, so I know they've been feeding, but it gives me extra confidence that maybe a number of fish were feeding here. So on this rod, I had a slight change of heart. I actually ended up putting out some Pacific tuna and some pellets, um, some 14 mil pellets. It's done me well, that sort of combo in France before. At the farm lake, I did really well with it. So I thought, why not? We are right on the French border. <laughs> Give them a bit of that as well. So that's what I went in with and I just had a little wafter, Pacific tuna wafter with a piece of pink plastic corn on the egg. Um, yeah, slightly different from the wafter rig just because these snags are probably the most gnarly sla slags. I keep on saying slags. Most gnarly snags, size two, wide gate beat point. Um, yeah, because that is, or wide gate X beat point, because that is the strongest hook that we make. And eight ounce lead going on. to the clip right let's get us back in position swing out back on down bump happy with that just check the spot a few times I'm gonna open the bail arm straight and back up before I put this back lead on don't want to back lead too far away because I want to give them as little room as possible with that set of snags so grab the line clip it on right there we go down it goes on to the bottom Bail arm open on the reel, and then just row back as straight as possible. Whoa, 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 whoa! What's up there? Ow! Ow! <laughs> you can do with turning your alarms <laughs> on, bloody hell! What happened? <laughs> so, I just, um... I'd just been trying to get a nice straight line. I got a bit of a bow in the line because of the weed that had gathered on it. And I'd just, uh, I'd just been sort of straightening the, the line, going to the rig. Climbed back in my sleep bag for a little bit of a nap. We were up early this morning. Luckily, Harry was right next to my rods because I forgot to turn the alarm back on. That was a schoolboy error. I mean, yeah, lucky Harry was right on it. And this was the rod I had the least confidence in, as well. Have fun, enjoy. We shall. We shall. That was a brutal take. Yeah. Well done, bruh. Right, just slow it down now, I think. Just let it drift. Okay. What do we have? 
Lead hasn't come up. Oh, it's the back lead. Right, here we go. Here we go, you've got him. I got him. Got there him. we go. Well done. Bush. Nicely done. Who's up? Knocked. Just wanted to go upside down. That looks very unceremonious. That's how we came in. <laughs> there you go, that was it. Double double balanced tiger. That's what did that bite. It's uh, going rather well, isn't it? It's going rather well. And I like if you'd have said to me, oh yeah, bye eight o'clock tomorrow morning, you'll have had four bites. Yeah. <laughs> I'd, have, I'd have laughed and I said, nah, shut up. I might have been lucky to get that for the, like, for the week here. I think, I think we might have underestimated the number of fish in here. There are definitely more fish than what, what was first evident. I mean, we literally went all over this area and didn't see anything when no. we first went out in the boat. Didn't see anything, did we? Okay, what, how big's he? He's probably... He's a 20 pounder, He's definitely he? a 20. He's a 20 pounder. There we go. There you go. Yeah, he's a... A 20 pounder, isn't he? Yeah, definitely. Well, today's been absolutely scorching. I'm just sat a little bit back from the rods right now in what little shade there is. Harry's gone to the shops to get some food and drink for the barbecue. And just a short while ago, I was out afloat trying to find a few more likely looking areas. Although we have technically passed the lake part of this challenge, we, we need to catch fish bigger than, than 42 pounds if we are to pass the challenge. And, and the lake does provide us with the best chance of, of a fish of that size. There's fish to mid 60s in here. So I really do want to get all three rods producing fish. I've caught on two of my three rods. So I've found another, another nice area. There are quite a lot of snags around it, which is where I think the fish are likely to be in, in this heat with the, with the conditions that we've got. Just tying up a fresh rig now. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna change the rod that hasn't produced a fish, get it closer to the snags and hopefully that can put another fish on the bank and something of a better size as well. So we are just going into darkness now, just about. We've been watching fish showing over my left hand rod on that same area where we saw them showing last night. And it's one of them you're thinking, well, it looks great for a bite at any moment. I put a lot more bait in this evening than I did last night. And yeah, we've got a, a pre-night bite. Stuck in the weed at the moment. We're just getting out there in the boat, getting above it. We're about there now, H. Steady it up. Oh no, it's just hard to get it out of this weed here. There we go. Just swing that net round in case it just suddenly pops up above me. The weed is pretty dense here. I don't even know if it's still on to be honest. There we go, it just started pulling just started pulling. We need, we need to back up, otherwise I can't pull it away from them snags. I'll do, I'll do. Just try and hold it there if you can. Well, it is still on at the moment. That weed is so thick. Is he? I don't know if it's just come off, you know. I think it's just pinged because I am. Just pulled, there it is. Oh, I can't get the net under it. Shit, it was too, it was underneath the boat. <laughs> it just pinged off the weed. It didn't, it didn't, uh... <sighs> I thought it'd come off exactly the same as what you did. Right, it's just behind it. Right, give me a little bit of a 
a nudge and I might be able to land this. I mean, I can't see anything. Right, where's the... There we go. In? He's in, yeah. <laughs> He's uh, another one of them though. Okay. Yeah. He's a little fella. I think we've been mighty unlucky with the size of fish we've had. Oh yeah, he's probably... Uh, can you see that? Well, I don't have a camera. You oh. have it on your head. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Can you see that? Yeah. There we go. Probably 20 pounds, something like that. 20 pounds. There you go. Right. And away. And away. Well, well done, mate. Um, yeah. Let's get the rod back out. Well, I've just had another fish and uh, it was another another small fish, probably maybe 20 pounds, something like that. And I don't want to be dismissive of catching fish that size, but at the end of the day, we're here to catch some, some big fish, bigger than what we caught on the UK version of this challenge. And I've set myself a target of a 20 kilo fish as well. And the way things are going right now, I. I just don't feel like it's going to happen. So I feel like something has to change. I've been topping off the hook baits with, with bright pink carp freaks pop-ups. And I'm just wondering if, if blending in will be the way forward. Maybe them, them smaller fish are just attracted to that, that bright pink. So I've substituted the bright pink topper and I've gone with a, a custom hand-rolled cork dust tuna wafter. So yeah all blending in rather than standing out and hopefully that can get me one of these bigger fish It's just after half one in the morning and hooked into another fish. Struck at the wrong rod to begin with. <laughs> it's that savage, all three alarms were going. I don't even have a three rod buzz bar at the front. Look, look at it. I mean, look at it. There you go. Well done. Thank you for epic. The, yeah, that's epic skills. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Mhm. Mm yeah. <laughs> All right. I'll uh, I'll leave you with that. I'm going back to bed. It's another little one, and it is little as well. This one, really little. Ah, oh, I got to redo two rods for that as well. I know I should be happy and it's a car, but that's a lot of hard work for a really small car. I don't know, I feel like I should say something more positive than that. <laughs> I'm not going anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Low double, isn't he? Low double figure mirror. Right. I'm not going to mess about. I'm going to straight back. And get the rod straight back out. Right, two rods to soak. Yeah. Great, can't wait. With my last four bites all producing small fish, I was beginning to feel a little bit despondent. 
were my tactics right? Those big fish had recently spawned. Were they even feeding or were they sulking? Time was rapidly running out and I didn't have the answers. It had been over 24 hours since my last bite and I felt like I needed a change. I decided to move two of my rods across to the main swim and fish one of those out in open water. A generous spread of boilies around a small clearing in the weed for the open water spot, whilst the second rod was placed close to the island out in front. Could this be the change we needed to land a bigger fish? Only time would tell. You heard of them? No. What is it? Flex. Oh, oh, you're awake. Oh, go on, go on, go on, go on. Yeah, let's grab a GoPro. <laughs> oh, oh, never. Come up. Ah, uh, lovely. You do. Don't be sad. I am sad and bummed. <laughs> Don't be sad. It's okay. I'm it's bummed okay. out. Don't worry. <laughs> you'll get another one. I mean, you might not, but you'll get another I'm one. I'm proper bummed out, though. That would have changed a lot. We could have gone to the canal. You needing to catch a Canal 40. There's only a couple in there. You get one, you're a legend. I've just raised your status from being my cameraman to being an actual angler. Just think, just think what could have been if, if I'd have landed that last night. So we didn't do anything else to camera last night because... I was too bummed out. Because <laughs> it was a bit a bit distressing. Mark's rod over by the snags, buckled over. It almost pulled him in. And then the hook pulled. Yeah. Was yeah, it, I mean... Talk, talk us through it. Well... It was a pretty de good description that, yeah. Rod slammed over, picked up the rod. As I picked up the rod, it's kind of like maybe stumble forward a little bit <laughs> on the staging. And then I, I, I've, I've picked it up, got it under a little bit of control. I'm thinking, this is it. This this is the one. And two seconds later, the hook's just pulled. Brought the rig back and the hook point had, had, had gone over. So wherever the hook had, it had gone in, it obviously hit. It obviously it's just hit one of those, these, these certain areas in their mouth where it's just that bony that you ain't getting nothing through it. Yeah. And it's just unlucky. And nothing else has happened since then as well, which is really strange. Yeah. Um, last, the night before last night, um, Live bites, three bites. bites through the night. You, you, had, you had a bite as well. Yeah. That, um, last night, didn't nothing. Get in. It is that one bite going into going into darkness last night. Well, about half an hour before darkness, I think it was. And that's it. Really weird. Really, and, really weird. And so we're sort of all we're we're just left in such a quandary because we've got one more night here. Potentially, we could go now. Um, and we've got... We could do two more nights here. We only really need 24 hours on the canal, potentially. That is true. We could do two two more nights here. So what are you worried about? <laughs> uh, yeah. I didn't even think about that. I don't know. I just, in my head, I had, I had we're leaving on uh, Friday morning from here. That was it, it was set. But yeah, we could do two more nights. Yeah, then go into the canal. If it's if it's like what it was like when we were there four years four ago. Four years ago. <laughs> you only need twenty four hours. Or oh, 
That would be tight. It would be tight. It that would, be, would tight. be tight. Okay, that gives us something to think about. Right, come on, let's have a, a regroup. So at this stage for me, it was getting a little bit tiresome. I hadn't had a bite for maybe 36 hours now and things were looking pretty, pretty dreadful with some of the fish spawning and no bites coming to either of our rods for quite a period of time. I just thought that the best thing for us to do would be to leave and clear our heads, get a fresh start somewhere else. So I pitched to Mark the idea that we left and luckily he jumped at the chance. Spawning over there. Yeah. Not good, is it? Not when they started spawning in the middle of the afternoon. They were it's a like... bit chasey earlier. Now they're getting getting down. You'd think if they started spawning in the middle of the afternoon, it's only going to end up in more spawning later, or tonight, or the morning. Mm. Yeah, I can imagine it escalating. Even the tents are all sort of chasey around and zooming around all over down here and yeah i don't know it just feels everything today feels it doesn't feel like there's a bite happening it feels very sexual i would describe it as today everything feels sexual everything it? about it it has a sexual vibe it doesn't have a carpy i'm going to catch a load of fish vibe mm. it's like get your pants off something's going to happen vibe <laughs> But in a fish, in, in a, a fish, in a fish, fish yeah. kind of way. So not a good way. Not, a, not the good get your pants not off type good, of way. No. Bad get your pants yeah. off. <laughs> <laughs> so what now is the plan? Well, we can't stay here. No. Um, we. Oh, there you go. We can stay here. We can literally stay here. <laughs> Please be a big one. This changes things, I think. That's a bonus day bite. That, right is, a, there. that is a bonus day bite. You like how I tripped over as I did good. Up the rock. You did good. <laughs> Fucking. You sure it's not a good one? So, we land this, it's a 40 pounder. What next? What? You catch one. <laughs> By whatever means possible. I think my chance has been and gone. That feels pretty solid now. I'm going to go out in the boat. Yeah. Coming with? Where's yeah. the GoPro? Where's the GoPro? Where's the GoPro? In, your... in my... Anus. In my... Anus. In my... Anus. Anus. Ah! I said it felt oh. good for a bite. I mean, I'll be honest, like, Harry sort of talked me into going. I'm like, mate, no, you, I'm like, mate, you just need to go away, go to the supermarket, clear your head, come back, and you see the place in a different light. No, I want to go now, was Harry's <laughs> reaction. I said, mate, go away, just move away from the venue for a couple of hours, go to the supermarket where it's all air-conned, get some drinks, come back, and he'd be in a different frame of mind. No, I want to go. <laughs> I'm like, this isn't your type of fishing, Harry. You're not used to sort of baiting and sitting and waiting. You're used to winding in fish all the time on match venues. You're just not used to it. <laughs> Shut up and get the body. Shut up, because you know I'm right, is what you mean. What's that? Oh, mate. No, it's not. It's, it's mate, not. Mate, can't get back. It's not me. Here, have that one. The... I told you you just needed to be patient. <laughs> right, next time listen to me on these ones. <laughs> I'll take advice from you on the little venues. Right, here, you have Sorry, the, this, this, is you, this, this is yours, this is yours, this is yours. I'm just pulling myself out to the fish.
Oh no, is that what's going on? Oh no. <sighs> I just got to that bush. Harry, what's happened? Got got to that bush and then there was someone else's line and my hook was just in the line, in the line in the bush. I've got a 10 pounder. What? I've got a 10 pounder, I think, or a tench. It's not a tench, not by that bite. I didn't see the bite. I was facing the other way, getting in the boat. Oh well, two bites, two lost fish. Yay. That's a bit dog shit, isn't it? But at least I can say mine was very small. It's not off. It's not off. No. You sure? It's in. No, nah, that's a car. Cut. It ain't the big one. But I've got one and it feels quite nice. And it proves my point when I was saying to Harry, stop being impatient. Well, this fish changes a lot. We'd only just been praying to the carp god, Cyprinus Maximus, and we were given a sign. Well, I was given confirmation, clarification, that I was right in wanting to stay here. And Harry was given a lesson, a lesson on not to doubt me when I'm saying we really should be staying here, a lesson on not making decisions behind my back when I was on the phone. <laughs> and that's what it's done. It's cost you. It's cost you dearly. But there you go. Proof that we should probably stick it out a little bit longer, see what the night brings, and then make a decision in the morning. Okay, so maybe moving at that point wasn't the right idea. The rod's rigged up, ready to go back out there because we are staying. Harry was wrong, I was right. We needed to be staying here a little bit longer. Harry was too impatient. He's used to fishing Drayton Reservoir where he's getting run after run every five minutes. That's not me. I'm more inclined to want to wait it out for a big one. That's not Harry. Harry, Harry is, is not prepared to wait it out for a big one at all. Harry the Matchman, we are staying here for a little bit longer yet. And that's a setup I'm going to be putting out there. It's, um, yeah, it's straightforward kind of snowman setup. Um, I've ditched using the, the bright toppers for a, um, a cork dust wafter instead. So match the hatch, blending in. I'm going to be changing my baiting strategy as well. I have been using quite a lot of bait but I think that has been tra attracting numbers of fish into the swim. I think those smaller fish are maybe swimming around in groups, so by attracting numbers of fish into the swim, I'm potentially attracting a group of small fish. Instead, going forward, I'm just gonna be fishing for a bite at a time, hopefully trying to single out those bigger fish, which maybe is our loners. So just, just enough to get one bite and hopefully it's gonna be off a big one. That's the theory anyway, it's worth a try at this stage. So yeah, I'm gonna uh, get a nice big lead on there, boat it back out there and set the trap. This rod has had no action on it for a couple of days now and it's finally gone. Funny little bite and I have to say it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel massive but it is nice to be playing other fish, that's for sure. Could be a big dog swimming at you. Very cooperative 40 pair. <laughs> That'd be good, wouldn't it? Yeah, that would be good. Brilliant. Yeah. It's a really cooperative one. Think it's feeling a bit big? Mm. I yeah, think it, maybe. The way it's not the way it's not sort of zooming around all over, it could be a it could be a decent one. This is steadily feeling bigger bigger but i don't maybe it's just like it will have a, a lot of weed on it 
which could be why it's not rattling around because it didn't feel big at, at the start, that's for sure. Right. Right, what have we got? It does feel decent. Good. I'm not gonna lie, but then it could. No, it's not. It could just have a weed on it. Oh, careful, careful, right, careful. There. Get in, get in well, and, I and stop fannying about. You get in. I mean, it was a completely different bite to all of the other bites we've had. Come on, nice big hippo. Just to further validate my point that we should be staying <laughs> here. I want to go home. I haven't caught anything today. <laughs> yeah? That looks, that looks nice. It's a nice fish. It's a nice fish, mate. Oh, look how old that one is. <laughs> that is a relic. That's a nice one, mate, yeah. Probably a crusty old common. Oh, wow. Go on then, get him in. <laughs> yes! Get yes! In. Yes! Oh, wow, that That's was lovely. totally unexpected and out of look the blue. Look at that! Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. Big old head on him. Thanks for uh, convincing me to stay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Proper dinosaur, that one. Proper dinosaur. He is cool. Wow, well look at that. Well done. Awesome. Right. Awesome. Right. Okay, what have we got? Thirty-four. Thirty-fours. Yeah. Thirty-four pound. Well, getting bigger. Yeah. Yeah, mate, it's an awesome. Oh, like, it's so, it doesn't I'm, matter I'm that it's literally, not a 40, does it? When I saw him pop up, I was like, oh my god, that fish is so cool. Yeah. So it like It doesn't matter about the I'm bait. literally buzzing. Exactly. I mean, That's like, all about. If I don't if I don't catch a bigger fish than this on this trip, I literally, I don't think I care, because yeah. that's cool. I thought it should be. Well, check out that old Belgian bruiser. These fish in here, the old ones anyway, have been in here for many, many decades, had many famous anglers fish for them, and to be honest, catching one of the old guard in here is an absolute privilege. I was so excited when I saw it pop up. It's massive head. I mean, it's definitely been a much bigger fish in the past. Huge head popped up, spiky dorsal fin twisting and turning, nailing it down to that snag, making my heart stop for a few seconds. And this is what it's about. This is what coming over the border over the channel, under the channel, to these places is all about catching fish like this. And yeah, I'd have one of these to 10 of your fast growing, newly stocked 40 pounders. This is a bit of Belgian history and right now it's all mine. One last look, I do have to Apologise to Mark. I did manage to convince him that we needed to leave against his will. He was saved at the last moment from that double take and I was gutted to have lost the one I did. But yeah, this has been our reward for staying and this is definitely just as much Mark's fish as it is mine. Let's get him back. <laughs> Look at he's so wide across his back and his shoulders and his head. Are you gonna go? Oh, he's gonna go. Oh, if you saw that from above in the water, you go just saw a 40 pounder. So that fish was just unbelievable. I, I was over the moon to have caught such a cool old carp and I have to admit that I was wrong. 
Mark was right and and sitting on our hands looks like it could well be paying off. So it has just fallen dark on what we are potentially discussing as our final night on the lake. Um, I'm, I mean, I was itching for a move earlier today. I might have been slightly proved wrong on, on the needing the move. Um, well, you sort of were and weren't, I think. I mean, you made the call to move while I was out of the swim on a phone call for five minutes, I came back and mm. literally started packing everything away, yeah. saying, that's it, we need to move, we're going now. And I was like, oh, you've been a little bit hasty, perhaps, here. Well, but, I, I, for, the, for the good of everyone, I thought it was the right thing to do. And I'm a big enough man to admit <laughs> when I'm wrong. And but, I was wrong. But equally, at the same time, I mean, it's been good. We've, we've had some nice fish, but I do feel like those bigger fish that this lake is known for, aren't really on They're the feed. They're not on it. Um, there's just a couple of other anglers on there, double up in a swim on the other side of the lake, and they said they have seen quite a lot of big fish down there spawning. Uh, where we are, there's just been the odd one sort of having a go, and not big fish either. The fish have been kind of spawning sporadically around the lake, but they're certainly not going at it. But over in the other corner, they, they said they have seen quite a lot of big fish either grouping up or spawning. So I think right now, as we've timed our session, a lot of those big fish have either spawned and are recovering from their spawning or they are sort of getting ready to spawn. I Whereas those goes, smaller stockies, I, I don't know. Well, yeah, no, I think, this, I think a lot of the smaller stockies, they do generally get it out of their system earlier. Yeah. And I think they're all sort of back on it and, and, and ready to go. And those guys have only caught small ones. Yeah, as well, and, yeah. However, last week, there was a lot of big fish caught yeah. here. So it's just a, it's purely a timing thing. Um, but it's been enjoyable all the same. I've, I've loved it. I've loved it. And like catching that one, uh, yeah, just a few hours ago was, was yeah, properly the icing on the cake for me. And um, I think we are going to move in the morning. Yes, we? yeah. Um, yeah, so a new location planned tomorrow, regardless of what happens. I am super excited to go where we're going tomorrow. We have fished there before we fish part a part of it whether we go back to that that part or not yeah. who knows but it's um it's a very special place for for me for us i guess um yeah no i'm super excited i've even been tying rigs my rods are all tied ready to go which, which is madness that's how madness. excited i am he's so, on the phone to rob hughes he's <laughs> I, I, five rigs i've got tied in readiness for that that's, that's a record for me but no, it's going to be great. But it's but you know we've still got tonight here. We still, we could the, end yeah, on a massive yeah. high. That's that's the thing. It's not like it's a it's totally not a write off because things could happen as we saw earlier. Things could happen at any moment. So we're crossing our fingers for tonight mm -hmm. and looking forward to tomorrow. Yes. But that morning it was time for us to leave the lake but I still felt like there was a chance that something could happen. I left the rods in right to the very end, even after Harry had packed away the net and the boat, and I'm glad I did, because this happened. Oh, Mark, you're away. I was just in the process of loading the van and my right hand rod tip's just gone over for playing a fish. It doesn't feel big, but it's going to be a nice parting gift. Managed to land it. Harry was so confident we're going to catch, he's packed all the nets away. And the boat. And the boat. And the fish is stuck in the way. I was just so eager to get to the canal. Well, I mean, I thought you would be the last person to catch a fish, to be honest. Really? Yeah. Yeah. The display of angling that I've really? seen on this session <laughs> has been shocking, mm. to say the least.
Coming. Yeah. Huh? That, oh, I'll tell you what. It's scaly as. And and big. What's it down? There's no snags or anything down there. No, no, no staging. It's much easier if I come right back here. I can't see anything that's going on. Well, I mean, there is a big mat of weeds that's covering it, but I can see it as well. He's good. <laughs> it's just a little little stuff. Yeah, thanks. Oh, f you seen it? Yeah. <laughs> Don't touch your line on that. Mate, he's coming up. 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 Is he in? Is he in? <laughs> what a car! I haven't even seen it, I was right back there. <laughs> what have we got? Look oh, he's him. beautiful. He cool as anything. Oh, that's nice. That Look is awesome. That. Look at that. What a fish to end our session at Clover Lake. I'd been stood quite a way back from the bank to make it easier to Harry land the fish with that big ball of weed. But as I went up to the net and sort of parted the weed out the way and just saw that row of scales, absolutely incredible fish. One of the coolest carp I've ever caught. And it was also a new Belgian PB. Thank you, Harry. Oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, how Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, my God. Bigger than I thought as well. I thought I just had a yes. lovely scaly, but I've got a, a big, big lovely scaly. Big scaly. Oh, yes. Wow. Oh, yes. <laughs> Mate, that is so cool. Them scales. The colours as well, like the dark chestnuts and slate grey back. and That's one one of the coolest fish we've ever had on the challenge. Challenge? Past. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am so chuffed with that. There you go. Okay. And, ooh, I think 34.12. 37.5. No way! <laughs> yeah. Mate, oh, well done. Like, man! Let's be honest, two weeks ago, that's that's a, a 40 pounder a, a 42 so it is challenge pass then well we don't need to catch from a canal but oh i didn't think it felt that heavy wow i mean like i said to you it, it doesn't really matter about the nah, weight i nah. wasn't even going to weigh that fish i said weight doesn't really matter and i meant and it. i said we better weigh it just in case because <laughs> look at it wow let's see the other side we haven't seen the other side Oh, I think it's even better. <laughs> yes. That is one of the coolest carp I've ever caught that. Look at that for a carp. I'm almost lost for words with this one. That, to me, is such a special carp, caught from such a special venue. I mean, just look at it. Just look at that. That is one of the coolest carp I've ever caught in my life. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> what a fish. And what a parting gift this is. Yeah, just as we were loading the van, Harry packed away the landing net and the boat. Not that it mattered, of course. 
but all that was left really to pack away were the rods and it rattled off with this. <laughs> ah, that's what happens when you pray to Ciprinus Maximus. He hears your, he hears your requests, your words. And he's blessed me with this. <laughs> yeah, thanks mate. Still can't quite believe what I just caught. Yes. <laughs> what an amazing car. And that's my new Belgian PB as well, just realised. I'm really chuffed to have a, a cart like that as a PB. Wow. Okay. Time to let you go on your way. And we've got to do the same. Gotta give it on now, yeah. Yes! Oh, I'm so chuffed. <laughs> right. Hit the road. Hit the road. Jack. So we're leaving the lake having not caught a 40 pounder each, what we really needed to pass this challenge. But on the scheme of things, it didn't really matter in the slightest. When you're leaving the lake or leaving the session on that level of euphoria, having caught such a special carp, the weight is absolutely irrelevant. Passing or failing the challenge is, a, is irrelevant because I was leaving on such a massive high, nothing else really mattered. It really was a fitting end to our time on the lake. We'd spent extra time there because Mark wanted us to and Mark had encouraged us to. And so he was rewarded for that patience right at the death. And at this stage, we had caught two really nice big fish, but they just weren't quite over that mark that we needed. But onto the canal. So when we arrived at the canal, it brought back loads of fond memories from when we filmed the In Pursuit of Carpenters 2 DVD a few years ago, and it really didn't take as long at all to find carp. There's one. <laughs> so there's one, it's, I'm talking to the camera, I'm talking to the camera. I know what you're the, doing. Yeah, one, I'm trying to get the fish one there, actually in and shot. And we just part there. <laughs> yeah, didn't have to walk far to find that one, did we? Oh, I love this place. Feels great to be so back good. here. So good. Right. Let's have He's a twenty pounder, probably. Twenty pounder. Should we throw a floater at him or wait for? Some no. Time? I think we can be more selective than that. We're gonna be able to find some nice. I've got the vibe. This is looking just absolutely brilliant. Got a love walking along the canal, just going carp, 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 carp. <laughs> Proper exciting. The sun was absolutely scorching. It was well over 30 degrees, and it made sense that the majority of fish that we were finding were either held up in weed beds or cruising around the surface. So that meant that I would go for my floater rod and see if we could get one off the top. Fermi Laporte, bastard. <laughs> what? Why did you just call me? Close the, close the, the door. I had to get this to okay. get out because Kieran made You have to pretend, you have to pretend we're getting <laughs> out the van I've already done it twice. Oh, right, yeah, there we go. Yeah. I'll oh, pretend I'll close it again. Is that right? <laughs> right, what's happening? What's the plan? Okay, well, we've got a rod. Yeah. We've got breadstick. We've got floater stuff. Yeah. Who's going first? 
Uh, I tell you what, I'll be fair here. I will be fair. Okay. I mean, it is considering my rod and you net. caught the last fish. The yeah. Session. Yeah. It is my rod and net. And it is my bread and. Well, I've also got bread. I tell right. you what, no. Use I... your rubbish bread. I tell you what, no, I'll be totally fair here. Okay. All the fish we find that are small, you can catch as many as them as you want. I'm not bothered. Literally, just if you find them, they're like double, double figure ones, like the smaller ones, you have them. That's, I'm fine with that. Literally, catch as many. But if I find a, a bigger. I'll have that one. <laughs> That's, that's, that's fair. That's not fair. It is totally fair. That's you could catch fair. ten fish before I could get one chance. I might not even get a chance. You know, <laughs> we'll get a chance. But... Yeah, because yeah, we've seen them. Yeah. Honestly, all them little ones, fill your boats. Honestly, mate, I don't mind. Honestly, I'm I'm totally fine with that. Come on, let's go. There's a little one. Go get that one. <laughs> I cast bits of slow sinking bread and bits of crust at various carp, numerous carp across a couple of different stretches, but all of them had the same reaction, which was to look at it and then go away. They weren't interested in that at all, and I definitely got the feeling that that was something that they had been targeted on numerous times by the local anglers. Now each one of these sections has its own resident fish. They are kind of trapped in each section. They can't move between the locks. And some of those sections have produced fish to over 20 kilos in the past. And while Harry and I still needed to catch a, a 40 pounder each to pass this challenge, it was by no means impossible, but it would still be a very tall ask. So after walking for several kilometers and gaining quite a few blisters, we checked out numerous stretches of the canal. We baited up a few likely looking areas, but there was one stretch in particular that we really liked the look of. This was actually the widest and shallowest stretch of the canal, but the water was also quite coloured, which made locating the fish a little bit difficult. And it was here where we'd seen the biggest fish so far, a big fat mirror with a creamy belly that we called the big cream or the grande creme. So we've settled on a stretch, an area of this series of, uh, of stretches of canal and it's a stretch where we've probably seen the least fish but we have seen uh well one fish in particular that we are we're going to call the big cream is that right mark that's it the big cream the big cream um yeah just a a, a big framed fish with a when it turned on its to its side you could see a really big fat orangey creamy belly on it and um yeah it looked a very big fish to be fair so yeah that's the target the target is the big cream but there was other fish in the area as well um and i've got my rig sorted i've pretty much just kept the same setup that i used over on the river so i'm back with my explorer rods and um, yeah, same leg clip setup, naturals uh, submerged leader material, naturals leg clip. And then um, the only difference from the river is I'm now gonna use a Ronnie rig on one of my rods and a wafter on the other. Um, the wafter is the pro stim liver, which matches the boilies that are predominantly what we've used on this session. I have used, um, I've used some tuna and I've used some live system, but we have predominantly put in the pro stim liver. And um, before this session, I hadn't used it a lot. And Mark was uh, was telling me I really needed to to get on and uh, and use it. And yeah, as as this session's gone on, I've go, gained confidence. So yeah, happy with that with the wafter and then with a northern special pop up. And we're gonna go softly with the bait just a couple of handfuls of boilies on each spot. We're gonna fish back leads. It's really shallow. We're gonna fish softly, softly, but... Softly, um, softly, catchy, creamy. <laughs> softly, softly, catchy, creamy. Yeah, indeed. Um, yeah, absolutely buzzing, full of anticipation and can't wait to see what the next 12, 18 hours brings. So the plan for the evening was to make as little disturbance as possible because it was a very shallow stretch of canal, um, but also introduce a bit of bait. We were quite confident that if they came across that bait, they'd get on it. So a few pouchfuls of boilies and a hook bait over the top, that was what we hoped would be enough 
going into that night. Well, I was all set up, ready to go, but I am making a bit of a change. I had set up two short hinge stiff rigs with fluoro pink carp freaks pop-ups, but after watching how the fish were feeding today on the lake bed there, kicking up, kicking up all the silt, I'm going in with a wafter set up. I'm just tying up a couple of wafter rigs now. That's a pimped up Pacific tuna wafter, fished on a size six wide gape long shank hook, short piece of shrink tube over the eye to improve the hooking properties. Rig ring tied level, level with the barb to create a simple blowback rig. That's it, super, super simple. Just gonna be fishing over a handful or two of, of boilies, just enough to get a bite. There's not stacks of carp in these stretches, just, just small groups of fish here and there. So you are just really fishing for a bite. And yeah, I'm, I'm sort of frantically trying to get a couple of rigs tied so I can get the rods in the water. I'm really excited for this. We've seen, we've seen a lot of fish today. We've seen the big cream. He looks impressive. Love to see that on the bank. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going as fast as I can. No idea what the time is, but I know that I haven't had a lot of sleep because the frogs are so loud. <laughs> there must be a million of them. But I'm playing a carp, which is incredible news. <laughs> literally, the fish started taking line and I literally got pulled off my feet. It's feeling good. Who knows? It might be, might be the big creme. The grand, grand creme. creme. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Woo. I mean, no wonder the noise. Look at the size of them. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the size of that. Imagine a million of them. <laughs> what are you doing? Can you concentrate? My fish is just here. Ah, the wrong clam. It's not. I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. What is it? You still got hold of the frog. Well done. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't really know what to say. I've got a car. I got a frog. <laughs> oh, look at that. Yes. If you can hear me over the frogs, which, oh my gosh, I. I cannot believe how much of a nightmare there have been. Just constant all night. Um, but even though they've put us off, <laughs> they certainly haven't put the fish off. This one is, I don't know, probably 21, 22 pounds and ticks the canal off for me. Um, I didn't think we were going to catch one this quickly. I did think it was going to be a little bit more morning bitey, but it's probably three o'clock in the morning now. And yeah, I'm holding a bar of Belgian Canal Gold. I am absolutely buzzing. And yeah, I just want Mark to catch one now and then who knows from there. Let's, uh, let's see. But for now, I am buzzing with you, my Belgian beauty. 
He didn't lie. you look at that when you think of belgium carp you think of beautiful chestnut commons and slate gray mirrors and we've got this <laughs> but i'm sure he was beautiful back in his in his in his prime in his heyday but not so beautiful now but it does mean that at least I've caught a canal carp. So that's one from every, every venue, every type of venue. And now I can sort of relax a little bit and it gives us time to soak it all in for the final leg of this trip and focus our attentions on the Grand Creme. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Is it the Grand Creme? I think it's the Grand Creme's baby brother. <laughs> He's got a big creamy belly, but yeah. it's not it's not that fish. It's a nice fish though. Good. Good. Marks away. Well, how's about this? It's a bit of a mental little, little 10 minutes, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, your last bite didn't come too shortly after. No, I, I mean, mind you, with the uh, that was probably only about, <laughs> what, uh, an hour ago. Feel, uh, no. feel better than... Well, it feels better than, than what I had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I meant. I'm not. I'm not asking whether it's a forty pounder. No, it's not. It's not the the grand creme. It's not the grand creme. I genuinely think I've got le le bebe creme. Le bebe creme. Le bebe creme. It's a nice fish. This is class, isn't it? I was just sat thinking. I'm probably not going to catch on this vlog because there's a lot of disturbance. <laughs> <about it. laughs> I yeah. thought. I thought exactly the same about my one that's straight out as well. Go on. He's, He's all right. He's this is, uh, I like it in the shallow water because they've got nowhere to go other than away. Oh, this is class. Love it. Right, here we go. Here we go. Keep him coming, keep him coming. Yeah, excellent. Um, <laughs> oh, <you're right>. Yeah. <laughs> oh, mate, that's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't come out any further. Proper, uh, proper leathery one as well. That's uh, what a morning. Quality. Isn't it? And, and I'm diddling oh, about down there. there and... Yeah, happy days. We have a bit of a. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 32 11. <laughs> oh, mate. <laughs> I am 
like, so buzzing. <laughs> so buzzing. <laughs> well, how's about that? I am absolutely over the moon with that. <sighs> to have just rocked up to this canal yesterday. We sc scoped out a few stretches. We found, found plenty of fish, but we've now had four bites. I, I could never have imagined this sort of sort of start on the canal and to have had a 32 pounder. And what a fish, what a fish. It's not, it's not the creme, it's not the creme, but it, it, it almost is. Big creamy belly, like we had said. It's got a really cool, almost perfectly circular scale on its flank and um, I'm a bit speechless, really, a bit speechless. Just taking it all in. <sighs> yes, so happy, so happy. <sighs> One last look before getting him back. I am so over the moon. What a fish. What a venue, what a trip. Still one night left. Yes, yes. What we're saying, 27.14? 30 pounds six. No way! Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes! <laughs> Never! Yes. Oh, wow, that's a canal PB. Yeah. 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 By ounces. By an ounce or two, yeah, but it, it's a canal PB. A brace, oh, yeah. A brace of 30s. Yeah. What? Two bites, two canal 30s. Oh, wow! Yes. And we've been seeing fish quite a lot bigger than what. These two fish. We've We're seen just... bigger fish than that. No way. Oh, I'm so chuffed with that. Canal 30. Well, what an absolutely incredible morning's fishing. Harry had just landed his fish. He literally just, just put it in the net. That was the 32 pounder. Then my rod goes with this 30 pound, six ounces, a new canal PB by about four ounces, but it's a new canal PB for me. I am absolutely over the moon. And what an incredible stamp of fish as well that we've had, apart, well, apart from one of mine, but the others, what an incredible stamp of fish. Unbelievable. And we've seen fish much bigger than this too. There's not more I can say. Well, this has been an absolutely incredible little adventure. Absolutely love filming this challenge. But I'm gonna slip this old fella back, get the rod back out and try for one more. But even if I don't get anything else, I don't think, I don't think this challenge could get any better for me. Pass or fail, it doesn't really matter. There you go, old fella. Our first morning on the canal, we've had four fish, including two 30 pounders. I mean, as far as I was concerned, that was challenge pass. We'd caught fish from a river, a lake, and a canal. And as far as I was concerned, things couldn't get any better. I couldn't quite believe the start that we had. Mark and I both agreed that catching four fish that morning was as good as challenge completed, we had already caught fish that, albeit at some point in their life, would have been 40 pounders. They weren't now, but we caught from rivers, we caught from canals and we caught from lakes. We hadn't ever done that together as a pair on one session. So to have achieved that, we were absolutely buzzing. And despite how great that morning was, I still had a slight itch 
that I needed to scratch. I needed to go and find some more opportunities and try and make something else happen. So that's exactly what I did. I grabbed a rod and headed off to the section downstream. So I've just come for a little wander. Mark is up with the rest of the gear and at the bottom of this little waterfall at the start of the next stretch down, there's a lovely little pool and I can see a couple of carp and one of them is really, really nice. So yeah, there's only one thing for it. I've got to, I've, I've got to have a go for it. Right, so they're right in this flow and I don't want to spook them. So the water comes out of this little brick built thing here and uh, yeah, rolls down. So I'm literally going to put my boilies in there so they just come out with the, with the flow and make no disturbance. And it's not the ghosty. No. Oh. Yeah, he didn't have a clue what was going on. Oh. Just came straight in and absolutely nailed it. Oh, awesome. Oh, it's a beautiful common. It is a beautiful common. Yeah, he's a nice one. Really lovely fish. Wow. Right, are we going to get you in? Are we going to get you in? Proper bit of opportunistic. Oh. Doesn't want to give up, that's for sure twisting and turning. Line's caught underneath him now, which isn't ideal. There we go. Come on. Well, I'm certainly glad <laughs> that I left Mark looking after the rods. There we go. Is it, here we go. Is it? Here we go. Right, he's done. Are you done? Are you done? You're done. You're done. You might. Just. Yes! Oh, proper cool fishing that. Oh, and it's a beautiful common. Really dark. It's funny, this stretch is completely different to the one that's 10 yards behind us. Much deeper, much clearer, and so the fish are much, much darker. Yeah, it was definitely a bigger one down there, but there was definitely a smaller one as well. So I've got the middle one. Awesome. Well, look at that. What an immaculate common to catch from such a cool location. Yeah, I had to get on my toes, Mark's sitting it out for that big cream it feels like there's a good chance of a day bite over there but i just had itchy feet there's so much of these canals to explore and there's really good fishing in every stretch and big ones in all of these stretches there was actually a much bigger fish down there with this one um, i'm not too bothered that it didn't pick up the hook bait because look at this Real dark Belgian Canal Commons, and yeah, absolutely made up. With that common slip back, I was in two minds as to whether to head back to the swim and have some breakfast with Mark and 
just relax for the rest of the morning or to go off in search of others. And I went off in search of others. I took a walk along the canal and ended up at the next stretch down. Finding carp ghosting over a spot we had previously baited, I got a rig in place and it didn't take long until it was away. Well, I've just dropped on to one of the spots that we baited yesterday. And I mean, it's not taken long at all. <laughs> I'm so glad that I've just come up and done this. I don't think it's, it's a bad fish actually. I'm not sure. Um, oh yeah, that looks a good fish. Right, uh, I'm gonna, I've gotta go down the bank a little bit because I can't land him here. I think it's just if I get wet feet, I get wet feet. One of them. Let's uh, let's go in here. There's a little step thing. Oh. Right, I managed to wedge my feet into the bank. But um, oh yeah, proper bit of opportunistic fishing, and that is a that's a big one. That is a big one. Yes, come on, yes, 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 that is a big fish. Oh, oh, I cannot believe what is going on on this canal. Like literally, after such a good night and early morning, it's like, how can it get better than that? Get on your feet. Try and find some. Prepped this area yesterday. That rod's been in there five minutes. It's heat of the day, but they're tuned into that bait. They love it. Wow. <laughs> and I almost lost it then. <laughs> I've done a lot of research on this stretch in the past and it is actually the stretch that Mark and I fished for In Pursuit of Carpiness. So I've seen the photos of the fish, I've spoken to the anglers and I'm almost certain that this is the big one in the stretch. It's been over 40, it's not over 40 now. I know that because it spawned out and I know that it spawns out well, but it is a big one. 37.11. Ah, oh. I did not expect to catch a fish that big from the canal at all. I am overwhelmed over the, like, look at that. Slate grey perfection. This is what the Belgian canals are all about. Oh my goodness. Look at that. What a fish. I cannot believe what has just happened. What an amazing trip we have had. This has just topped it all off for me, surpassed all of my expectations. I never dreamt of catching one this big from the canal and there's proof in my hands. Absolute Belgian warrior slate grey what the canals are all about come on yes i'm very kissy very kissy today very kissy
pick up. Here he is. Hello. All right, mate. You look happy. What's happening? <laughs> I've just caught a ridiculous one. You know that stretch we fished on Eye Park? Yeah. I just caught the big one. No way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A little bit empty, but like, but just under 38 pounds. Oh, no. Oh, wow. <laughs> Want me to come up or what are you doing? No, oh, mate, I've, I've put it back. Like with you having all your, all your stuff up there like it would have literally been like a pat down with it being as hot and everything i just wanted to wanted to get it back and we've got some wicked footage and some great oh. photos so i'm gonna come up and show you oh awesome mate oh well done i wish i was there but well done yeah yeah no cheers mate well we'll be back in a second uh yeah i will regale to you how great it was because it was very good yeah. <laughs> awesome. cheers mate great oh See you soon. Yeah, yeah. Cheers, bye. It's the last night of the challenge. Mm -hmm. How do you think it's gone? I don't think it could have gone much better, could it, really? I mean, it could have gone better. Are we going to pass? No, we're not no. going to pass at all, no. Does but, it matter a jot? No, not at all. How could it have been better, really? Maybe we could have caught something bigger from the river. Could have caught something bigger from the river. Like, we, we've, caught, we've caught fish that are 40 pound fish just timing and whatnot mm. you know fish drop weights you it's not the fish hasn't changed the fish isn't a different fish it's still the same fish okay here's here's a good one right so those fish that we caught that that we were trying to get bigger fish than the fish that we caught a hassy fen the last fish that you caught from the lake how does that rank in terms of your own personal fishing compared to that one you caught from Hassie Fen? Oh yeah, that, that, that means a lot more to me than the one from there. Yeah, of course. And likewise, that one I caught today yeah, from a couple of stretches down means so much more mm. than that one that I caught on that challenge. And I think that that is key here, that weight is irrelevant when a capture means something. So if you said you have to surpass your results from the previous, previous challenge, it's a pass. Yeah, I mean, I didn't say that. <laughs> yes, that's, that's how it should have been worded, maybe. But one more night, who knows, we might be blessed with one last little bit of yeah. our own personal glory. Yeah, there's uh, rods are still in, a few hours remaining, so who knows what's gonna happen. Well, it was a quiet night last night. No more fish came our way. Uh, I was quite thankful, if I'm honest though. It was a good chance to catch up on some sleep, but also quite surprised after that first night, how it all kicked off. It was off. so good. Um, but yeah, either way, the van is now packed. We are ready to hit the road. And this little adventure has been quite frankly, epic. Yeah, I have loved every single minute of it. We have caught some amazing fish, had a brilliant time. And for the first time ever, we have both caught from a canal, yeah. a river, and a lake. Yeah. So yeah. in that sense, that that specific challenge 
is passed, but this specific challenge But do we is care? Failed. Really? Do we care about that? I don't care. Having caught what we've caught? No. It doesn't really matter, does no. it? At all. Had so. an amazing time. It's been brilliant. And I think all that's left for us to say is... Challenge, challenge failed, but we don't care! <laughs> <laughs>